Good afternoon, everyone. If you will all take your seats, we will get started for today. We're so delighted to have everyone in the room for this wonderful, wonderful occasion. Uh, my name is Yolanda Lewis. I am the founder of Grown Women Real Talk, who is... Woo! <laughs> And we are the presenters of um, all of our friend Fabiola's vision for survivors. So we're very excited to be here. A little bit about Grown Women Real Talk. We are a women's wellness program who also serves the youth community with regard to emotional wellness and um, personal development. So we're excited to extend what we do into the survivors community so that we can all thrive, be happy, and grateful with our lives. Um, before I bring Fabiola up, who's going to um, host the events of today, um, I'd like to bring up Vanessa, who's going to share a poem um, or express herself through poetic uh, form, um, a little bit about Fabiola. So Vanessa, if I could have you come up, we'll move forward. Hi, everyone. Um, this poem is dedicated to Fabiola, my mentor. It's called, You Are a Survivor. You have went through pain and you still stand tall. Smiling, laughing, sharing your positivity with the world. When I'm struggling, trying to find my way through hard times, a warrior like you pushes me through the right path. The fighter is just that, a fighter. We are a warrior in a battle, in a battle but that does not define who you are. You are a queen. A person I admire, a survivor. Thank you. Without further ado, please all let's greet Fabiola Hippolyte. Thank you for that. I truly appreciate it. Welcome, welcome, welcome. I just want to first of all say thank you, God. If I'm standing here before you guys, it's because of God. If this event is happening, it's because of God. I'm truly, truly, truly grateful for life. And thank you for coming and celebrating. That's why we're here to celebrate life. You know, I, I said, you know, we're gonna cry, but mostly this is a happy time because there are those who didn't make it. And we are here to, I mean, we are alive, we're surviving, and we are grateful. I'm grateful for you guys. Thank you so much. Everyone knows Fabi loves to talk. Uh, <laughs> so next up on the uh, program is um, the Fighters Award presentation. So we decided that every year um, when we do this, we're going to honor survivors, but we're also going to honor um, those who have um, earn their angel wings in their fight for uh, cancer. So this year's survivor is a beautiful person um, who I had the pleasure to know, uh, Shirley Houston. And so we're going to present an award to her family um, on behalf of her fight, uh, her vibrancy, and the life that she lived um, here with us. So I would like the family to come up to accept her award, please. On behalf of Grown Women Real Talk and Fabby's Faith, uh, we present this award to Shirley Houston um, with love and grace and honor. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Hi guys, um, I'm, a, I'm Shirley Houston's only daughter. Um, I think I just want to say thank you for letting us accept this for her. Um, I know that she had a big impact on a lot of people from what I've heard and obviously on me, teaching me everything that I basically know now. Um, I'm still able to use it and like put it into my life and live how she'd want me to live, um, even though she's no longer here. 
I know that she's always watching over me. And again, I just want to say thank you for letting me be able to speak to you guys right now. How's everybody doing this afternoon? How's everybody doing this afternoon? Woo! Thank you, I love it. Um, before I continue with my piece, I would like to give a special thank you to Fabiola for inviting me to be here um, to perform, seriously, and to put on this amazing event. You know, um, to be honest, to tell you a little bit about how Fabiola and I met, I performed a spoken word piece at a women's empowerment dinner sponsored by Queen's Company. And after I performed my piece, Fabiola came up to me and she said, your, moves, your words really moved me so much so that, you know, I came into this space, and Fabiola, I hope you don't mind me sharing this story, um, you know, so much so that I came in, she, she walked into this venue um, and felt uncomfortable to expose the fact that she had recently had a mastectomy. And, you know, so she didn't want to take off her jacket and she didn't want to bring her whole self into that space. But after listening to my piece, she felt like she could bring her whole self into the space. And she was freely able to take off her jacket and we bonded over that. And ever since that moment, yes, so thank you for your courage. And ever since that moment, we stayed connected. Um, Fabiola is following and supporting what I do. I follow and support what she does. And as a black woman to another black woman, that means a lot to me to see a mom to understand so many more elements of your story and your struggles from your adolescent years to what motherhood means, to what black, being a black mother means, to being, what being a woman in general means, um, and a survivor, and a woman who's also undergoing her own treatments till this day, right? You are my hero. You are a hero to me. I'm honored and I'm grateful to be here for this invitation. I apologize because I have not been here throughout this entire program. I just came from another event in Cambridge and I couldn't be in the most polar opposite sides of Boston, of the greater Boston area. But again, I'm honored and I'm grateful to be here. My name is Bernadine DeSantis, also known as Bernadine Truth. I have my own company where I'm a motivational speaker, a blogger, a spoken word artist, and a workshop facilitator, inspiring individuals to unapologetically know their truths and speak their truths and bring their full, authentic, genuine selves into any space and to persist in spite of any life hardships that they may have encountered. Right? And so, thank you. And that came out of being a survivor of sexual assault. As an adolescent, I was molested, and at 23, I was raped. And when I was raped at 23, I stayed very silent for five years. And it wasn't until most recently, after the launch of my company, did I share that content publicly with individuals. And so again, to stand up here and to celebrate survivors, survivors, the term, the word, the experience, the life, means so much more to me as well. And I thank you all, and I want you all to give yourselves a round of applause for the survivors in this space, for allies of survivors in this space, because again, we can't persist without the love of all of you, so thank you. Um, I hate to do this part, but if you want to follow me and you want to keep in touch, um, I am on social media, Bernadine Truth, B-E-R-N-A-D-I-N-E, Truth, on Instagram, Know Your Truth, Speak Your Truth, on Facebook, and my company is BernadineTruth.com. So without further ado, I'm going to jump into this piece written in dedication to survivors in this room, survivors in this world, to those who are still in existence amongst us on this planet, and those who are up high in the universe. So thank you. This title, this piece is titled, A Message of Love to Survivors of Cancer. Dear cancer survivors who find the courage to wake up most days, if not every day, fighting against the pain and moments of strength disguised by feelings of weakness as you dig deep to step out of bed and go about your day, trusting that all will be okay today. Cancer survivors, I see you. Dear cancer survivors who have received physical, emotional, and mental neglect from family, friends, and strangers who do not know how to respond to you and your needs. So you're left feeling isolated, wondering who will keep the legacy of all, of the, all, all that you've done alive long after you leave. Know that you will never be forgotten. Abused cancer survivors, I see you. 
Dear cancer survivors who show up to work with your best foot forward, leading initiatives, sharing your voices and letting others know you are more than a sickness. You are a mind with a work ethic that can speak for itself because the truest full-time job is persisting against all odds with cancer. Even when the easiest option is calling out of work in moments when you feel like you can't push through on work culture of disaster. Professional cancer survivors, I see you. Dear cancer survivors whose beauty is either fetishized or insulted, admired or hated by those who most resemble you solely because of your external appearances and your courage to persist through this. In the limelight and behind closed doors, the love you experience is never consistent, so you struggle to view your natural selves as beautiful. Dark-skinned and light-skinned, bald, wigged and weaved hair cancer survivors, I see you. Dear cancer survivors who carry the weight of your entire family on your back based off attempts to not only survive for you, but for your family. Fearful of the moment that you won't get to see them again, so you cherish every moment as if it were your last as you have come to truly understand that no day is promised. Mother and father cancer survivors, I see you. Dear cancer survivors who are too afraid to love yourselves for who you are because the thought of being true to oneself is more powerful than the actualization of self-love externally and internally. Easier to love the mirage than the actuality of your true selves in reality. The fear of true exposure is too deep so you hide. Crouching behind lies is easier than standing in the face of truth. Insecure cancer survivors, perfectly imperfect. I see you. Dear cancer survivors who proudly identify as LGBTQ and struggle to love and be loved openly because laws don't protect the pain you feel from family, friends, and strangers who don't understand the laws of your sexuality, let alone the experience of undergoing chemotherapy. LGBTQ cancer survivors, I see you. Dear cancer survivors whose innocence was stripped away, leaving your flesh behind where the assault took place that day and your soul forever changed, fearful of speaking up because the culture of rape says you wanted it. And now your identity is multifaceted as survivor to you was double-ended. Cancer survivors of sexual assault, I see you. Dear cancer survivors whose assertive ways do not waver as you envision a life much greater than that in which you see. Wanting more with expectations you know are not too much to ask for because anything less than is deplorable. Boss ass cancer survivors, I see you. Dear cancer survivors who fishes with her heart, hoping to be caught or catch the love you know you deserve but can't have yet to receive, battling societal and cultural scriptures that state expectations right to them, the narrator, without consideration of what is right to you, the main character. Hopeless romantic cancer survivors, I see you. Dear cancer survivors who empower other cancer survivors because you understand the highs and lows of being hopeful, scared, undergoing chemotherapy and being told you are in remission with fear of ever giving, getting it back again. Empowering and optimistic cancer survivors, I see you. Cancer survivors, I see you. Cancer survivors, I see your battles between the external world and the internal world. Battle wounds so deep that only the love from another survivor can heal them, for not all that is spoken is misunderstood. Cancer survivors, I hear your cries of love, joy, pain, and hurt, always looking to find the light. Even when your light is dimmed, you'd rather let a friend shine over you any day in faith that all will be okay. Cancer survivors, I feel you. Touches so warm and nurturing that even with a heart so empty, your love is so full. Soft kisses and gentle hugs to all those you love. Let all know that even through challenge, you are strong. Because even when you're down, you are up. Cancer survivors, I see you. Cancer survivors, I hear you. Cancer survivors, I feel you. Cancer survivors, I love you. I respect you. And I truly thank you. Thank you. I love you, Mary. 
your soul speaks in volume. When you meet her, you, it's like you first meet her soul. Your energy, I admire you. You my hero, seriously. And I'm honored to have you as a keynote speaker. I, c I couldn't think of a better person to be the keynote speaker at, my, at the first annual Survivors Luncheon. So please, let's welcome Mary. Whoa. <laughs> Ooh, yep, your phone. Okay, pardon me for one second. Ooh. So keynote speaker. I had to kind of look that up because I've never been a keynote speaker for those that had known me before. Um, I love being behind the scenes. I love being able to work as a team. I love being able to not be in front of cameras or TVs. <laughs> Even for those that know me, it really is truth um, because it's really important that we, on a daily basis, need to be able to continue to grind, continue to live, continue to not have any regret. So I went to church this morning and it was very inspirational just right down the street here at Our Lady of Lords. And it talked about being disciples, right? And what does a disciple mean? The fact that we are on this earth, we are here living and doing good. And that shouldn't be such a difficult thing to do. And yet we find sometimes, including myself, that you're just drawn in and drawn into things that you just can't because life is way too short. So we need to be able to live life, but also love life. And again, that sounds such a simple thing to do. Yet when you have your faith and you know where you are not longed for this, world, for this world and on this earth. So what are we doing spending the time and being negative and, and there just isn't the time. And so when there are things that go on in my community, which means this Brockton community, but it means this Brockton region, this means this Southeastern Mass, it means this Massachusetts, it means my hometown in Chicopee, it means all of you who I don't know the importance that I respect you and I love you, and if I don't know you, I'm gonna find you, but that you become part of the fabric of my life. So when I meet you, it's for life. So when Ollie needs a saxophone, we go find a saxophone that my daughter doesn't use and you just do it. It's the right thing. So in the, um, in the scheme of things that there was, my story is this. Um, in 2011, I woke up with a pain in my left breast. Had no idea, I put it off. And when I decided not to put it off anymore, I went to go see my doctor and it just progressed from there. And the radiologist said, advocate for yourself. I don't know how to advocate for myself because you're out there and you're advocating for everybody else. But for us, for us, for all of us, in order for us to be helpful to each other, we also have to be good to ourselves. It's not an easy thing for any of us to do, but it's really important. So when providing these remarks about sort of the keynote, and, and again, keynote to me means to inspire and to leave you when you walk out of these doors, that you leave with number one, a little skip in your walk, maybe a little bit more of the inspirational words that we already have heard. How do you not look at Bob and not be inspired? But we do this because there's so much more work that needs to be done. So when you walk out of here, it'll be important to share, to advocate for each other, but it's also really important to then be the voice for people who don't have a voice. So God gave me this special gift 
with my mouth that I am never afraid of being able to walk out the door and take the next person or take whatever may be and just go and do it. Like, don't look back. Don't look like who's going to say something. Don't look at, you know, how much money and what kind of credit and how many times in the paper. Go and do it. Because the go and do it part, that does not ever get old. And when you live in a community like Brockton, um, you can't. You just can't go by and, and drive down Main Street or Oak Street or any part of this community and not be affected by the people that are here and the people that need you and you and you, all of you in this room. Um, my mom, I'm one of six, and um, my mother always said, many hands make light work. How many have heard that saying before? Many hands make light work. So when we come together, we come together as a family. Whether we're related or not, we come together as a family. And I think those are the words of that this community, I'm originally a girl from Western Mass, from Chicopee. If anybody knows Chicopee, it's a small community, about 50,000, made up a bunch of Polish people and French people. And um, I can't give back to my community as often. So what do I do? This community, when it was time for me to go through my cancer, this community rallied around me. So my last chemo treatment was in December of 2011. And four months later, my husband unexpectedly passed. Right, so when, you, when you're going through cancer, you, 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 you've got my hair, my, I had lost my hair and I lost weight and I was like, but I still like, I was gonna fight this thing. And then losing him, I thought my world, my world did fall underneath my legs. But you have choices in life. You can do something or do nothing. And doing nothing was not an option. So I've taken that experience and I often had my conversations with God and said, what else can happen? But you take those experiences and you turn it into good. So we've established an organization called Just Checking In. And the Just Checking In is about my husband. It doesn't matter, he would give rides to people where they were caught in the rain. He would bring people from Boston who missed their train and he'd say, well, I'm going to Brockton, do you want to ride? He didn't know, and he, he didn't know. Who does that in this? year right we're all brought up to be nope 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 we can't because we don't know who that person is or that stranger is but that stranger is a human being that stranger that person who is down on their luck is a human being the person who's going through cancer is a human being that person who loses a loved one for all of you for losing mom um, it's she's a human being and it's how you live your life after they have gone so I could probably go on forever and I won't but I have some I, I do have some words that have been really been my guidance and if you bear with me for a second because I need my glasses so as a disciple and I'm you are all gonna be my disciples and Bob's um, disciple as well. So there, I used this once before and it, and it does guide me. And um, there is a book called God is First. My family and friends are second. I am third. And it's written by Gail Sayers. He was um, Chicago Bears um, running back. And he had a fellow teammate that had died of cancer. And they, they, they spent time with each other. He was a friend, you know, and we often use people of high profile to kind of carry the word. And, and by leading by example is what we need to do. And so it was turned into a movie called Brian's Song. But again, it was about Brian Piccolo who had died of cancer. And sorry, I've got to, um, 
But those are the things. The fact that he put God first and he puts himself last is again a, 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 something that I really truly believe that we all need to live by. Um, Steve Jobs, the late Steve Jobs, as you know from Apple, had died of cancer. And I thought his quote was pretty interesting. If you live each day as it was your last, someday you will most certainly be right. We're all, going, we're all not longed for this world. And it all depends upon how you attack it. Again, we could be afraid, could be afraid of dying. How many here are afraid of a dying? I am. You should be, right? You don't know. You don't want to suffer. You don't want your family to suffer. You don't want anything. But it's okay to be afraid, but it's how you attack your life. So Steve Jobs, I, he addressed that quote was at Stanford University shortly before he had passed. Um, one of my favorite quotes is by um, Stuart Scott from ESPN. Does anybody know, watch, yeah, he's pretty amazing. And I actually had, was flipping through channels the other day and this very quote was on and I figured it was a message from God that I share this with all of you. When you die, it does not mean you lose to cancer. You beat cancer by how you live, why you live, and the manner in which you live. I'm gonna repeat that one more time. Pretty amazing, right? He's, he knows he's, he's passing. He knows that he's, he, is, he had just come out of the hospital after being um, there for seven days. He's, he's at the SB Awards. And he has this quote again, when you die, it does not mean you lose to cancer. You beat cancer by how you live, why you live, and the manner in which you live. So live, live, fight like hell. And when you get too tired to fight, lay down and let someone fight for you. And then the final, and this has a little bit of a sports theme, and if you can tell, Jimmy V. But, but again, I, I, I go to them because they've taken and they've utilized these opportunities to be in a prominent way, to, to in fact make it known about how to attack this cancer, how to attack living with cancer. And Jimmy V said, don't give up. Don't ever give up. I'm not losing, I'm fighting. And so when you go through life and you need to be able to, to understand what that is, um, you know, you have, to, you have to be able to take that, um, that will. It comes from here. It just comes from down deep. And then you stop thinking about yourself. We are here today because Fab doesn't think about herself. So I have my daughter Casey with me today. And um, it stopped me a couple times because, so she saw her mom go through cancer and then she saw her dad. <laughs> and I forgot, right? Because sometimes I was just thinking about me. And she's never complained once, not once. She's been there for every minute, every time. And she's taken it and continues to be my inspiration. So where's, where's Deidre? My makeup is like really going here, Deidre. <laughs> Some people haven't recognized me with this beautiful makeup I have on Deidre. Awesome job. I hope it's waterproof. Um, <laughs> but right, so what she said to me, Mom, I want you to be healthy. And so from that, I then found a way to not only be healthy, but to, and, you know, to take care of myself, but I also found a way of giving back. And so I rode for the first time the Pam Mass, 86 miles. <laughs> In the driving rain like it was yesterday. <laughs> And I loved every single second of it. And why? Because I met fellow cancer survivors. They're not giving up. 
They're not giving up. They're not giving up. And while I am not as eloquent as, um, where's, where's the woman, um, where was she who just spoke with the beautiful words? Oh, Bernadine, oh my, I am not as eloquent as Bernadine. Um, but it's my soul. It is what we need to do. Do not give up. So I have, I want, I'm going to have everybody do this. Can I get, stand up? Please stand up. And first of all, it's good to stand up anyway, right? Let's move those legs. We've all been sitting, you've been listening. So first thing is I want you to say, don't give up. Can't hear you. Don't give up. Again, don't give up. Again. Don't give up. Awesome. And the last thing is, no regrets. Well, on the count of three, no regrets. One, two, three. Again, no regrets. Again. No regrets. So from me, where's the gentleman? I want the gentleman just to be standing for right now. Just a gentleman. I have some, I have some princess hats for you. And the reason why you, I don't think I have enough here, but I will, you, I'm sure you can all fight over this, right? Here's a, can I have someone help me with the princess hats? Here, honey. They may have to give them all back to you. But here's some princess hats, and here's why. You can just give them all to whatever men. You can, for those who would like a princess hat, you can raise your hand. But here's why I would like, oh, there we go. There we go. We'll give them out until we can, whoever wants it. Here's what I would love to say about you gentlemen for being so supportive by being here. It takes courage to do this, to walk into a room full of women. My husband would like turn right back around, by the way. He really would. But you're here, and you're here, and you have all of our love. And I do, I don't look at, and you, have, you can wear your princess hat. And I pur purposely brought them here because it's not to be foolish or anything, but it's, if you, for those who would like to wear, wear them, please, see. I just want to say to you, continue being supportive to the people in your family. Be supportive to your relatives who are fighting cancer. And from my heart to yours, thank you for being here. So with that, I would like to say thank you for everybody. And fight on. Thank you so much, Mary. That was absolutely inspiring and beautiful. I don't, I don't think they're, I think everybody's makeup is messed up. <laughs> Powerful story. Thank you for sharing a piece of you with us. Uh, we truly met her soul today and I, it was beautiful. So thank you, Mary, so much. Um, next up, we are excited because this is the moment um, we've all been waiting for um, and why we're here for all of the survivors and fighters um, and us as a community here to share our love with them. So um, we're going to bring up all of the survivors at this time. Did you want to say something? Before? Yes, yes, yes. Um, we want to bring up all the survivors at this time, the honorees. We have um, Nadia Gay. Yes. We have uh, Anita Riley. We have Karen Penn. We also have Mary Waldron back to the stage. And we have another award next, but we're going to present this one first. Um, So we'd like to present you with um, the Survivor's Award. Oh, 
Okay. So this award go, um, goes to Karen Penn, um, and this is on behalf of Grow Women Real Talk and Fabby's Faith. We present to you uh, the 2018 Survivors Award. Thank you so much for your fight. That doesn't have to be long. Okay, that's my daughter Yolanda. I'm very proud of her and I'm very honored to be called a survivor uh, by Fabiola and this great um, initiative that um, I pray the Lord blesses you to continue to do it for however long he wants it to be done. I'm also a great friend of my sister Shirley I still miss her, still hear her voice, the one that we had a moment of silence for. I am truly blessed to be a survivor. I feel like I'm not, my situation wasn't as intense as others that I've heard who had higher stages of cancer. I had stage one, but I'm glad it was caught early and no one wants to have any stage of cancer at all. So I encourage women to get their mammogram. A matter of fact, when I was supposed to get mine and got the can saw that I had cancer, I thought, I'm not gonna come back again every year. This is a waste. Who wants to go through this? But I'm glad I did, and I'm glad they caught it early so that the doctors could be aggressive with what was aggressive inside of me, trying to take me out. But God saw fit that that would not be so. And I'm here and I'm grateful for life. Appreciate life. Don't go through something like this to appreciate your life. Appreciate it now, appreciate other people and enjoy your life and as the speaker said give to others we need more of that in our community start in your community and give to others and love god and care about yourself okay i'm done <laughs> I'm sorry before you go we have one more surprise yep yep you do this so this is, <laughs> they're twins, I can never tell them apart. I have a twin sister too, but we're fraternal. These two, I can never, so I'm not gonna try now. But this was a surprise. When I, I love these girls, yes. I asked them, can you guys, this is what I wanted to do. I wanted to gift, yes, I wanted to do portraits of each and one of you. And my wonderful girls, they all decided they pick up they picked one of the survivors and painted you guys. So this is a gift, additional gift to you guys. Okay? Yep, yep, turn on. Let's take the trash back. Let's take the trash back. Our next honoree is Anita Riley. I love this girl. I ran into her at one of my our kids' um, concert, 
she ran to me. She's like, oh my God, I've been looking for you. Your story inspired me so much. Come to find out she has twins, a boy and a girl. I have twins. And to know your story and to know you, there's so much strength. She battled while she was pregnant. But she, listen, you are my hero. We all here to support each other. I'm, I'm grateful for your life and I wanted to honor it. Okay, you're appreciated, you're valued, you are loved, and I wanted to celebrate you because this is not easy. I know it's not. And, oh, she's not here. Which one? We have your portrait. My, my, her name is Girl Incia. She's another mentee of mine. She painted this portrait and she wanted to be here to give it to you, but she wasn't able to. But please enjoy it on our behalf. Sorry guys, I'm like shaking right now. Okay, glory to God. Without him, none of this will be possible. We all know that. Um, as you all know, I did battle cancer. Um, I found out I had cancer, maybe two weeks later, I found out I was pregnant. And then a few weeks after that, I was having twins out of nowhere. And then they tell me I have to remove both of my breasts, but I've never, got down on myself. I knew God gave me the cancer and the twins. Everything happens for a reason. Um, I remember just getting news and just praying for my, not only for myself, but for my family. I prayed that he would just give me the chance to see my kids succeed in life. I prayed for this disease to better me as a person. I never asked why. I just wanted this to become something that made me better as a person and to view life in a different sight. Thank you for the people that care for me, my family, my friends, my wonderful, handsome husband, my rock. <laughs> Ladies, this man has never made me feel unsexy. He doesn't care that I don't have breasts. And baby, I love you for that. I thank God for you every day. <laughs> he never let me get down on myself, and I appreciate that. Staying positive and believing in God is what got me through this. Thank you for coming out today. You guys all look beautiful. Fabiola, you're so selfless. For you battling what you're battling and be able to do this for us survivors is amazing. And I thank you and I'm blessed that I've connected with you. Thank you so much. Yolanda, tell, um, you want to share the story about how this planning came about? The planning of, the planning of this. No. <laughs> As she was talking, and all I could think of, all I could remember was that night, I was in so much pain and working on the flyer. There were so many times I wanted to cancel this event. She would not let me. I am, th there's no words for you. There's no words to thank you. I pray God can repay you in ways I can't. And I know he can way better than I can, I can ever repay you. For the many nights, for the, I have this thing where I forget a lot. I can't remember, I can't imagine how many times she sent me the same information <laughs> over and over. Did you do it? Nope, I sent you a text. Did you do it? Nope, I sent you another text. I keep forgetting, I keep forgetting, but no matter what, trials and no matter attacks, no matter what came at us, 
you were like, it's gonna happen. This, this, is, this is gonna happen. And just standing here, listening to the stories, it made me realize why God had to make this thing happen. It was, this, 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 is, this is God. I don't know about you guys, but I feel him here. I feel his spirit and I'm grateful for you. Just wanted to be able to say that because it just made me, thank you, thank you. Are we gonna go to our next? Nadia, Nadia, Nadia. You know, I, I'm gonna try not to cry. I'm gonna try not to cry. This woman, right? She brought me, when I was battling breast cancer last year, I love music, I'm a music person. And I'm one of those people, the little things mean a lot to me. She made me a CD of all these great, powerful women, fighter, listen, and you have no idea what I was going through like mentally at the time when you brought that, when you came to see me. The, if anyone knows this woman, she, you guys think I'm selfless? She, she's selfless. She didn't even share her story that much. I just wanted to, every chance I get to honor you, I will. I admire you. I love you. You are a blessing to me. And to watch you fight this the way you fought it, like a true warrior, a true fighter. You know, it's, I'm gonna, I don't know what, I, I, there's so much, I can, you deserve this. You deserve this. So in, so I present to you, Nadia, survivor. That's what you are. Bianca, come get this for me. So let me tell you a story of this. Yes. So when I was going, when I was choosing pictures, this is the picture that's. This is this is this is you. I love this picture of you. It, it captures so much. Forty years ago. Yeah, man. Open it up. Um, Fabiola is saying all these kind words about me. However, looking at her gives me strength in all of you. And uh, the keynote speaker, her message re resonated with me so much. And I, I, I bet from a lot of us here, because it's just a human story. My cancer story started um, last December, I was in Haiti doing um, a voluntary uh, mission that I've been doing for the past five years. I volunteer at an orphanage for abused children, and I was there, and I bought a ticket for 18 days, and my children went with me. They spent five days, and the day they went, they came back to Boston, I felt the sharp pain on my back. A pain that I never felt before, but I, I stayed, I remained stoic and strong, and the women poor things, they boil all kind of leaves and tea, and nothing ever, I cried in silence, I didn't know what was wrong with me, that's a pain I never felt before. When my son picked me up from the airport that night, and he said, oh my God, mama, you're in such pain, maybe you should go to the emergency room. I said, no, let me go sleep in my bed for one night and the next day I'll go. When I went to the emergency room, I had, they, do, they did an x-ray and I had a fracture lumbar on my back. 
and the doctor said it's kind of strange for your age to have those kind of fracture on your spine I didn't think of cancer I didn't think of anything and then they said I think you should go do an MRI so I went to the MRI and then when the specialist doctor called me five like a half an hour after the MRI and I said something must be wrong but she was she didn't really tell me it was cancer for some reason people are not really easy to tell you you have cancer so I told my son, he came out of the shower and I was crying and he said, Mama, what's wrong? What's wrong? When he see me crying. And I said, I think I might have cancer. He came, sat next to me, put his arm around my shoulder and said, Mama, you're the strongest woman I know. If anybody can beat cancer, you will. Amen. Amen. But um, I still, I still then tell my daughter and then the following days and then I call her and I say, are you home? And she said, no, mama, I'm driving. And then I say, okay, when you get home, call me. When she called me and I was crying, say, mama, what's wrong? What's wrong? And then I said, Bianca, I think I might have cancer. And then she came to my house and then she said, how do you know you have cancer? What is the sign? And then I gave her the MRI report and then she was so mad. She said, how can these people give this to you without explaining to you what's going on, whatever. And then they both of them got into Google's and we searched and said, and then her, her lawyer mine and she said, how the hell they could tell you this, blah, blah, blah. And then they said, mama, let me see what's going on, what's going on. And then by the time they were researching what I have, and then my PCP called me, scheduled an appointment for me, and then to take me, to, to give me the final words. And then she said, mama, I'm going with you. Then she went with her pen and her, notebook on hand and then the woman came to the woman scenario i have good news and bad news the good news is you have cancer the bad news is there is treatment and then my daughter start asking all the questions what we could do right in there they sent us to an oncology and then the oncology from biopsy and everything and then they told me this is what you have this is what you're gonna do but i couldn't believe that i have cancer i just had my mammogram november 8th 2017. I went to Haiti on December 1, 2017, and then I was diagnosed with cancer in February. I had mammogram and colonoscopy in 2017, and then they told me, and then I said, what cancer? Where did this cancer come from? But my cancer was not um, breast cancer. My cancer was a cancer I never heard before. I have multiple myeloma, which is a cancer of my white blood cell. And I, I say, wait, but I had sign all along of, of the symptom of this disease, but I've been paying attention to them. I just go by my business. The, the, the sign of this cancer is uh, when your bones are breaking. And I had so many fractures that I walked through. I went to work one them. I didn't sit down. I just keep going. I say, oh, it's just another pain. And then that was the cancer breaking my bone because the... My cancer is in my white blood cell, which is in my bone marrow, and it extended my bone marrow, and that's what makes my bone uh, prone to fracture. However, this cancer proved to me the goodness of people. Uh, the, the, the keynote speaker was saying, I am a person, my kids tell me that all the time, throughout my cancer, I was so weak. I am a doer. I never let people do anything for me. I do, do, do. And this cancer showed me that I have to step back and let other people do to me, do for me. My children stood up and when I complained, I said, oh my God, I'm so weak, I can stand up. And my daughter would say, mama, God is speaking to you so you could take care of yourself and slow down. I bet you the moment you feel better, you're going to be running Brockton, doing something for somebody. And then I would tell my son, I feel so weak. He said, Mama, it's not out of laziness. You're battling cancer. I go to the oncology clinic and I complain about being weak. The woman said, Nadia, you're battling cancer. And then throughout that, I still managed to do things for people. I remember uh, a young woman who needed a ride. It was raining. She has a little baby. I couldn't even drive. I was shaky. I was whatever. My children didn't even know about that. I drove this lady. I drove this lady home. My sister said, if your children know what you're doing, they're going to put you in a nursing home. And then I said, I need to slow down. But like Ellen Keller said, 
I am only one. I cannot do everything, but I will not stop to do what I can do. And then that's what I'm doing. Sometimes people say, you don't have cancer. You don't look like a cancer patient, but I do. I still, I'm still in treatment. I'm still doing, but I'm back to work. I'm working full time. And I'm thanking God for my community that stood up for me while I was out with my kids. They like the rocks who stand next to me who help me do that. When you have your kids, you change their diapers, you don't know what they're gonna grow up to be. Those two people were the one. Without them, I would not be where I am today. And then I wanted to say thank you to them and I love them. One thing I'll add is, um, when I was diagnosed in 2017, the minute I was diagnosed, I didn't allow the diagnosis to get into my spirit. You know, um, when people refer to like my, my, my oncology, she's really good for that. Your disease, your cancer. I said, whoa, first of all, I rebuke that. I'm going through it, but it's not mine. I will not attach myself to that. You know what I mean? That, cause it's something I'm going, I'm fighting, I'm going to beat, you know? So I always say it's very important, the power of words. We have to pay attention to how we address this disease. It's not my disease, um, it's a disease that we are battling. So let's not, I don't like to give the cancer importance. And I, and I agree with you, this past um, four weeks, that's exactly what God did, because you guys know I fight and I fight publicly. But this four weeks, God put me on my back to teach me that, listen, I understand how you, this is who you are, but I can't do what I need to do with you all over the world like that, all over the place like that. Rest, you know, rest. And that's what I did. And thank you for everyone that allowed me to do that, to just rest, because I haven't rested since I decided to be an advocate and I'm gonna fight publicly, I'm gonna let everybody know, but sometimes you have to take your fight privately. And that's how I'm able to stand here before you today, because I took my fight privately with God, nor do I associate myself with this disease, because it's not my disease. That's just wanted to share that with you guys. Okay. So our next, Honor is Mary. My God, I, there's no one more deserving of this. Like you said, you are a survivor of many things. But yet, the way you stand up for people, the way you connect your soul, your energy, that's what people see, that's what I saw. That's what I connected to. before anything, before I knew who you were. I connected with your energy and your soul. So I pray that God continues to cover that. So. Mary said she's, she's, she's spoken enough today. She's not speaking. Hi everyone. I don't really want to talk because I'm really nervous and emotional. Um, I don't know anybody besides like that surviving and getting cancer right now, so I really wanted to be a part of this. Um, I actually work for like a cancer biotech company, so I get to see like a lot of the other stuff that people will deal with. I don't do the like super important stuff, but I do something. So this was important for me to come here and show my support in Fabi. Um, I find her to be very inspiring. A lot of these stories touched me and I, I'm very emotional. I get very teary-eyed. Um, so um, thank you ladies for sharing your stories and empowering other people in other ways more than you know. That's all I want to say, but thank you. Oh, and also, um, I have an Instagram, Yuvalines Creations. My name's really long, hard to spell, but if you want to know what it is, I'll help you. I have business cards. Um, but that's it, I'm a painter. That's what I love to do, but I, again, thank you everyone and thank you for sharing our, your 
stories. I know it's hard to do that. Even me sitting here, I'm like tearing up. My eyelashes are coming off. I'm shaking. But <laughs> thank you. Our next honoree is Survivor Support category. And we have Dr. Yi. Dr. Yi, ah! <laughs> she is my acupuncturist. I recently made the decision to stop chemo and just go with God. And this woman, I walked in her office, literally lifeless, okay? I couldn't eat, I couldn't talk, and I was down to like, what, 100? I was less than this. But from the first day I walked in, and to that day when I walked in, like literally lifeless, it's the way she responds to you when you walk in. Like, she's always made me feel, even my worst days, like, you beautiful, you okay, we're gonna, she's always there to remind me I'm gonna be okay. And when she says it, you really believe it because it's, her, it's in her spirit, like she knows. I'm like, what, do you, have, do you talk to God? Like, do you have access, that kind of connection to God? Like, he told you I'm gonna be okay? That's how convincing she is. Just understand that you are doing God's work in that, in, at your place. I'm grateful, I'm grateful to have been introduced to you. Um, Clara, where is she? Thank you so much, Clara. That woman, there's not a day I don't go there. She refused me for treatment. She encourages me. I mean, if I'm standing here, that's, she's one of the reasons, the, one of the people God has placed in my life to lift me. So I appreciate you, I really do. Okay. Thank you, thank you. Thank you. Yeah, Fabiola is um, very inspiring to us and she's the angel. Um, so that's I, I can say. I, God put you in here and for more and more people. And then you remember she said she practiced some uh, medical Qigong yes. exercise and then she feels uh, the benefits. Uh, so I say you, you, you have to be the coach and then the, the leader for uh, the Qigong practice community. Uh, this is a big, a big exercise in Asia to helping uh, to rejuvenate to detox the body and rejuvenate. Those is a self-exercise, so everybody can learn. And then, uh, right now, you have a, a, the best coach here. And then, <laughs> so you're ready. This is where I love her. When I was when I walked into her office, I'm like, she has to have something because I could feel myself like my body is giving up on me. Like, I need I need I need the help. All she said to me was, "Well, there's not much I could do for you today. Here's the video. Go watch it." and it'll give you life. I'm like, I need herbs, I need, you know, I need something. You know what you give? When I did the video, it's like a Tai Chi. It's, an, it's another form of Tai Chi, I believe. I encourage any cancer patient going to, to do that exercise. Some things for 10 minutes literally sit, put life back into me. Like it's not always about, I, I'm not gonna get into it, but my choice, I've made the choice to stop chemo and to pursue all their other alternatives along with Dr. Yi, who's supporting me. And I'm grateful, I'm so grateful to you, Ms. Naima. So please speak to her, anyone looking for, not, for uh, if you're interested in learning about acupuncture, please speak to her. Really quick, these awards are, these particular awards, and we have one more um, coming up, they're for survivor support. And so this particular award is, it goes to organizations or persons 
who help to better the lives of cancer patients as they're going through. So Dr. Yi's organization does that through, I guess, holistic kind of health. And the next organization we want to celebrate, and this is the last award um, for today, is um, Live, Learn, Love. And I'm going to ask Pam to come up and accept this award for Live, Learn, Love. So people, person, yes, and how you met Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Um, my name is Pam All. I am the co-founder and co-director of Learn, Live, Love Cancer Outreach Organization. Uh, we are a very small grassroots organization based in Situate, Massachusetts, and uh, I have two partners. And the three of us are full-time working women, and we have families and very busy lives, but uh, we've all felt the devastation of cancer when cancer knocked on our back doors and just kind of walked in and made itself at home in each of our lives. Uh, I can only speak for myself uh, right now that I'm a 13-year cancer survivor, and... <laughs> And 13 years ago this month, my partners and I decided to try to even the playing field for other women cancer patients, uh, not just of breast cancer, but brain cancer, multiple myeloma, lung cancer, you name it, gastric cancer, any cancers. Um, we realized that through our own experiences that not everybody has the kind of blessing of support that we have. Not everybody has a community that will rally around her during her time. And not every woman has the dignity of just being sick for a little while in her own home. Uh, basically, Learn, Live, Love Cancer Outreach Organization, our mission statement uh, in it essentially is to relieve the financial burdens of any woman cancer patient so that she can have the dignity of being in her own home and experiencing respite and peace of mind without any burdens of looming bills, rent, mortgage, utilities, so they're gonna shut off my internet, I shouldn't go to treatment because I need my medicine, and, and there's a litany of tidal waves that wash over people's lives and threaten the absolute sanctity of their individual, ordinary life. And so what we do is, we relieve that. We relieve that burden for them. Um, we pay vendors on behalf of these patients so that they, their hearts and minds can really truly rest, respond to treatment effectively, and heal more rapidly um, through the multitude of approaches that are available. Uh, it's through organizations throughout the state throughout the globe really that women cancer patients and and every cancer patient finds support um, it's a, it's a club that nobody signs up to belong to but once you're a member you realize you're you're not even in a club you're in a new family a family of supporters of people who who believe in you who encourage you and who hope the best for you and who cover you in prayer. And that's what we strive to do too. Um, and we're just blessed to be here. We are ultimately honored by, by being here with you Fabiola and Yolanda and all of you beautiful honorees. Thank you so much for bringing your words of wisdom and hope to this community and to what I'm sure is the exploding social media community that is <laughs> exactly so so thank you for taking time out um, to just say thank you to us too we're 100% volunteer nonprofit we're like I said we're three ladies we we do what we can year in and year out and we manage to serve the state of Massachusetts and try to make a difference and and God is good to us our funds have never run out and we've never said no to anyone Thank you for that, too. Thank you.
All right, thank you guys for your patience. This is our first year putting this together, so we're really honored and excited for everyone to just bear with us as we work through um, putting this together and making sure that it's special uh, for everyone here. So we have just a few thank yous that we wanna do. Um, and the first one is to um, our spoken word artist, Bernadine Truth. We wanna just thank you for coming. <laughs> for sharing with us. And the next person we want to just send a special thank you to is Nikki. Nikki, you know you were such an integral part of helping us put this together, yes you were. And so we wanted to thank you for all that you um, contributed to this effort in helping. Um, I think Mary said it, um, many hands make light work. And so you were one of those many hands. Thank you, thank you, thank you. This is unnecessary. There is not anything I wouldn't do for Fabiola. Any of you who know me know that Sundays I'm usually in bed all day, so <laughs> the fact that I'm up and I'm dressed and I'm here is a big testament to my love for you and of course to Mary and also to Nadia and also all of the people who were honored here today. I'm in awe of you. I love you all. My prayers are with you. And Nadia said something that struck me where she said she cried in silence. Nani, do not cry in silence anymore. No one in this room should ever cry in silence again. Cry out loud. Cry out loud. Lift up your voices. Cry, sing, pray, scream, fight. Do not stop being heard. Do not be in silence. Okay, I love you. Thank you. And of course, we could not let the evening go by without recognizing the visionary for this wonderful, inspiring, filled with so much love event. Um, so we have Latonya here who's going to present, and we have also a painter here who's also going to present. I'm not sure which one it is. Wh which one is it? Okay, so I need her to come on up. <laughs> um, Yes, no, 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 and present. So I'm going to hand it over to you. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Yolanda. Thank you, Fab. Isn't this such a beautiful event today? Oh, my gosh. I'm one of those that I don't like to come out on Sundays. Um, but for Fabiola, yes, I'll be here. And I don't have too much to say, but I did take some notes while I've been here because I think it's important to see. This song came to my mind as I was sitting and it goes, this little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. And just being here, I, <laughs> her light shines so bright, right? So much so that her journey has inspired me and validated the journey that I'm on in ways that I, I didn't think I would see, but God just has a, such a good timing for everything. And then being here, I'm seeing where the light that's in you is coming from through every single person that was honored here today. And if you know Fabiola, she does not put the light on herself. She's always shining it on somebody else. And I'm so happy that she even included me in this. So my business is called Let's Write Life and I design journals and I teach healing through journaling. 
And so when she asked for the journals for the event for the lovely recipients, I could not say no. And then of course, I decided I was gonna donate these handbags that I was holding on to for a special moment and a special someone to share them with. So please get your raffles in. Um, but, okay. And I couldn't let this event pass without sharing one of these awesome handbags with you. Just to thank you, Fabiola, for your journey. Thank you for your courage. Thank you for showing us what it looks like to be a survivor for those of us who maybe aren't close to somebody, but we all know somebody. So we just thank you. I thank you for this event today. And thank you, Yolanda, for hosting it and making it happen with Fab. <laughs> Couldn't let you go without having one. So Someone asked me why, why, why are you doing this? Like just fight, you know, just worry about you. But it's never been me. I'm grateful that God put, a, put in my heart, a heart to serve and a heart to love. And to me doing this is, is part of my healing, honestly. Every person that I help, that's part of my healing. I couldn't think of a better, way for this to play out i'm i'm my heart is literally full i'm appreciate i'm i'm feeling so grateful thank you guys so much for coming thank you for supporting this vision it was a vision that almost didn't come through but but god you know but god i'm so appreciative i i'm not a talker like i said i i i prefer to shine the light on other people but i'm my heart is full. I'm truly, truly thank thankful. Thank you to each and every one of you that took the time to come out and support this vision. I truly appreciate it. And I, I echo, um, I echo Fabiola's sentiments of thank you. Um, a lot of work went into putting this lot of long nights, uh, but to see everyone here and happy and smiling it makes it also worth it. We're excited about next year already. Um, so please make sure you stay connected to be in support of next year also. Uh, before we release you all to go and enjoy the rest of your Sunday, we want to go ahead and share the results of the raffle and then we'll close things out. Oh, yeah. Okay. So.
So actually, I just drew the numbers and I wrote them on each thing because nothing destroys the energy of an event more than somebody reading a list of numbers over and over again. <laughs> so if you want to come up and check, everything's numbered and you can just show your ticket. And in terms of the centerpieces, if you realize you've won, then you can just you know take whichever one. They're all different and they're all beautiful. Um, but thank you so much. Awesome. Well, thank you again. Good night. If you want to support this event next year, please see one of us and how you can be of support. So thank you so much for coming. Have a great afternoon.